I was just I thought you were going to look at your Bible. <laughs> they ain't going to find it in there. No. I was looking for a saw. <laughs> now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from the tree of the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat from the tree of the garden, but God said you must not touch, you must not eat from the fruit that is in the tree in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. Well, God didn't say you can't touch it. You will certainly not die, the serpent said to the woman. For we know that God, when you eat from the tree, you will open your eyes, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit was good, for food she had pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig trees together, and they made covering over themselves. Now I'm going to stop here. I'm going to tell you this. Now this actually happened at the Maggie and uh, Debbie Lust used to go to the uh, Assembly of Gods in Barnesville. And, Bob Keister is the pastor, which is Jesse Keister's death. And he was talking about this here right now. And, and, and uh, Debbie, out of the clear blue sky, looked at Maggie and said, you know that if Adam and Eve hadn't sinned, we would all be sitting here naked right now. <laughs> 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 Maggie just bust out laughing. Everybody looked at them. <laughs> And the whole church started busting. <laughs> Nobody could figure it. They never did tell me, but it was they said. <laughs> then the man and his wife heard the sound of the God and was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord above the trees of the garden. But the Lord called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden. I was afraid because. I was naked, so I hid. Now get this. And he said, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I had commanded you not to eat from? The man said, the woman! <laughs> they didn't eat fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent is me, and I ate it. So God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed above all the livestock, all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. To the woman he said, now here you go, women, you can blame me eat for this. I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. With painful labor, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, and you will rule over you. And to Adam, he said, because you listened to your wife and ate from the fruit of the tree, which I commanded you, you must not eat from. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat food from it all the days of your life. Whew. You see what Satan, why does Satan tempt us in the first place? It's his invitation to get us to live his kind of life. And to get us to give up the good life that God wants us to live. That is just what Satan did to Eve. He succeeded in getting her to sin. Ever since then, he has been trying to get people to sin. He even tempted Jesus in, after his baptism in Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. 
How could Eve have resisted, uh, resisted temptation? By following the God lines that God had set. First, we have to realize that being tempted is not a sin. It becomes a sin when we follow through with the temptation. Second, to resist temptation, we must pay for strength, pray for strength to resist it. Sometimes it literally means that you run as fast as you can and learn to say no when confronted with what we know is wrong. In James chapter 1, verse 12, it says, Because blessed is the one who preserves under trials, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised those who love him. Let me show you how Satan works. He tempted Eve by getting her to doubt the word of God and his goodness. When he was telling Eve, God is too strict. He's too stingy. He's too selfish. For not wanting Eve to share his knowledge of good and evil. Well, Satan did with this. He got Eve to forget about all that God had given her. And he got her to focus on what God had forbidden. We also fall into trouble when we dwell on what God forbids. Rather than on the countless blessings and all the promises he has given us. The next time you feel sorry for yourself, because of what you don't have, consider what you do have in that God. See, when Adam and Eve sinned, they got what they wanted. Immediate knowledge of both good and evil. But they got it by disobeying God. And then the results were disastrous. See, sometimes we have the illusion that freedom is doing anything we want, no matter how wrong it is. But God says that true freedom comes from obedience and knowing what not to do. And the restrictions he has given us are good. It helps us to avoid evil. See, we have freedom to walk in front of a speeding car. But we don't need to be hit to realize that it was something foolish we do. See, don't listen to Satan's temptations. Satan used a sincere motive to tempt Eve. He was telling her that she would be like God. And that she would, all she had to do was eat the forbidden fruit. When he, when he told Eve that she would become like God, in effect he told her she would become her own God. See, to become like God is not the same as trying to be God. To be like God, we need to reflect his characteristics and to recognize his authority over our lives. Like Eve, we too have worthy goals in this life. But when we try to achieve them in the wrong way, before we start, check your steps. Check your goals. Do they honor God as well as pursuing the goal that pleases God? See, when we put ourselves above God, it leads us to rebellion against God. And that is exactly what Satan wants us to do. See, one of the realities of sin is that it's expect, it, spread, it spreads. Look what happened after we sinned. She evolved out. When we do something wrong by trying to cover our guilt up by involving someone else, it's like toxic waste filled in a river. It pollutes the downstream and it spreads swiftly. That's what sin does. See, we need to recognize our sin, confess it to God before you're tempted to pollute those around you. See, Satan tried to make Eve think that sin is good. Like Eve, people choose wrong things because they have been convinced that those things are good, at least for them.
See, our, our sins might not seem ugly to us. Beware, the most pleasant sins and the simplest ones are the hardest to avoid. So be on guard. Prepare yourself for the temptations that may come your way. See, we can't always prevent temptation, but there is always a way of escaping. In 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you're tempted, he will also provide a way out for you to endure it. Use God's word and, and God's people to help you stand up against it. You see what started the fall of man? Eve looked, she took, she ate, and she gave. <coughs> Our battle with sin is often lost at the first look. Temptation often brings begins by simply knowing something is wrong. That's the first step. However, you can overcome that temptation when you follow Paul's advice. Run from those things that produce evil. This is the Roma, 2 Timothy 2.22. Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness. Faith, love, peace, along with these, who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. See, after Adam, and see, after Adam and Eve sinned, they were embarrassed about their nakedness. Their guilty feeling made them try to hide from God. Good luck with that one. A guilty conscience is, is a warning sign that God has placed in us. You can call it our uh, eternal GPS. When you go down the road, you make a wrong turn, what happened? Recalculate, recalculate. Well, that conscience tells us that we're doing something wrong and we need to get back on track. The worst thing we can do is try to eliminate that guilty feeling without eliminating the cause. That would be like a painkiller. But that would be like taking a painkiller but not treating the disease. Be glad those guilty feelings are there because they make you aware of your sin so you can quickly ask God's forgiveness and then correct your wrongdoing. See, in case you didn't know, God wants that fellowship with us. See, when God was walking in the garden the cool of the evening, he wanted to spend time with Adam and Eve. But because of their sin, they were afraid to show themselves to God. Sin was broken. And the fellowship and close relationship they had with God stopped. Just as when we sin, it breaks our fellowship with Him. But thanks be to God's Son, opens the way for us to renew our fellowship with Him. God longs to be with us, He wants to be with us, He offers His unconditional love. Our problem is fear because we feel. We can't live up to God's standards. We need to understand that God loves us regardless of our faults. See, that should help us remove the feeling. See, I can't count the times. And, and I can't remember the times that I've read about Adam and Eve. And how many times I've looked at that story. Stop and think about this. How could they be so silly to think that they could hide from God? Yet, don't we do the same thing? I think as though God doesn't know what we're doing. Come on, people. God wasn't born yesterday. Don't try to hide it. It can't be done no matter how hard you try. You ever try to sweep dirt under a rug? Dirt under a rug? Dirt under a rug, and what happens? Got a big pile. You can't hide it. But isn't that typical of man and woman? You know, when God asked Adam uh, about his sin, he blamed uh, Adam blamed God. 
I ate the apple gob, but it's your fault. I ate the apple, said Eve, but the serpent made me. See how easy it is to excuse our sins by blaming somebody else. However, God knows the truth. And he holds each of us responsible for what we do. Don't try to blame away your sin by shifting the blame. Admit your wrong. Confess to God. Adam and Eve chose their course of action, disobedience. Now God is choosing his. God couldn't allow sin to go unchecked. He had to do something about it. If the consequences of Adam and Eve seem extreme, remember that it was their disobedience that set motion into what is going on into our world today. Every human being born except Jesus has inherited the sinful nature of Adam and Eve. And the punishment that God gave them shows how seriously God views sin. It cannot be overlooked. Even on the cross, what did Jesus say? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? God couldn't even look at his own son dying on that cross because of our sins. So the next time you're tempted to sin, think about it. I don't care how small it is or how big it is. It's still being disobedient to God. Let's pray. Father God, You are the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through you. It's time for us, Father God, to owe up to our shortcomings. It's time for us to start doing the things that we need to do as a church. To reach out to the lost. To save this dark, dying world. But we have to show the world that there is a better way by the way we live our lives and not let the world tempt us into living the way they want to. In Jesus' name, amen. Next.